It's the unhappy hour. Broadcasting to you live from the Milky Way galaxy, the solar system planet Earth, North America, the United States of America, California, Los Angeles to be specific. Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the Unhappy Hour here on the TNAM Radio Network here at the NewAmericanMedia.com. My name is Brian Engelman. I am your host as I have been for the past 40% of the past decade cumulatively. I appreciate the fact that all of you guys have been with us for this time. If it's your first time listening, a couple quick things. Check out the homepage, thenewamericanmedia.com. Why go to thenewamericanmedia.com? A couple reasons. On the right-hand side, there's a TNAM radio button. That's the link. You press play and you listen live. When do we go live? We go live whenever we feel like going live, especially when the Cleveland Cavaliers defeat the Wa... I almost call them the Washington Wizards. The Golden State Warriors. All those W's. <laughs> Fool me once, uh... <laughs> Not going to get fooled again. <laughs> no, not that kind of W. Um, the Warriors, the Cavs are up 2-1 to one right now. Cavs took care of business on their home court. Interesting interview with Dwayne Wade after the fact. I don't know if any of you guys had a chance to catch that one, but Dwayne Wade, who's played with LeBron for the past four seasons down in Miami, said, this is a version of LeBron James I've never seen before, and I've seen you in every circumstance. It's taking a whole different level, and I... I, I I think we're witnessing history here. This is just an absolutely amazing run against all odds. Trust me, Corey, one of our regular listeners, there's no way he would think that we'd be up 2-1 to one in the driver's seat. Hey, you know what? We're a Timofey Mozgov phantom traveling call away from heading for the sweep tomorrow. Think about that for just one damn second. Minus two all-stars. Anyway, let me get back to the homepage of thenewamericanmedia.com. On the right, TNAM Radio, click play, listen live. Underneath that is Twitter and Facebook. On Twitter, we're at American underscore media underscore. Underneath that, we're on Facebook if you do a search for The New American Media with spaces in between. Then like our page. Um, I guess you could also search for our, our, our new sports group. It is called uh, The Unhappy Hour Radio Show, I believe. I'll ask Greg for clarification on that. He's our fact checker. Greg is also uh, the host of our newest radio program here at the TNAM Radio Network. You can find him whenever he decides to go live on uh, blogtalkradio.com slash the new American media. His name, the name of his show is Sports and More with Greg Moore. Uh, I guess we'll welcome him into the program right now without delay. Greg, welcome back, sir. Ahoy, ahoy. <laughs> Hello, sir. How are you? You, you? you tricked me again. You had me laughing with ahoy, ahoy the first time, and then the Mr. Burns <laughs> reference got me. Hey, did you see that The Simpsons is starting next season off with Homer and Marge officially uh, separ legally separated? Did you no. see that? Yes. That just, that, that just broke like a couple hours ago. I figured they're going to make it interesting after, what, 25 years? Hey, you got to spice it up in the bedroom, don't you know? I guess so. Hey, uh, Marge and Homer, we'll see. Um, but anyway, Greg is the host of his new program. Greg, tell us about what you're doing over on Blog Talk, what you've been up to, how many episodes are under the under your belt, what you plan on doing uh, your next show. Just talk to us a little bit about what you're up to. Uh, well, I did my episode uh, – well, seven episodes we're in now. I did episode seven yesterday. I had Fox Sports uh, fantasy lead editor Ryan Fowler on, getting some celebrities on. Uh, <laughs> kind of a big deal. Episodes. Kind of a big deal, you know. Um, you've been on the show a couple times. Uh, I've had Lonnie Chisenhall guru Steve Preview on <laughs> once. <laughs> and uh, usually I go live about um, 12 hours from now on the East Coast. Yeah, what time is that East Coast time? It's usually one thirty, but I can go live whenever I want. Uh, if anybody wants to join, but it's it's good though right it, now. But yeah, it's 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 good when you decide to do this because like then you're kind of like locking in. Uh, mm -hmm. getting your time slot ready. Uh, tell them about what, where do they go? Blo what is it? Blogtalkradio.com slash? Yeah, blogtalkradio.com slash the new American media. Um, I'll post it. I put it on my Twitter, which is at Greg time. Uh, I put it on Facebook. I wonder if yeah, yeah, Gregory yeah. Moore. I'm the only Gregory Moore on Facebook. So. Seriously? You're the only Gregory Moore? <laughs> no, it's like 19,000. Yeah, I figured. So, just like every, every day Moore and, Every yeah. day elementary school, like like the first day of the, class, the, the year, they go, all right, uh, Steven, Susan, Brian, Nine hands would get raised at the same time. I'm like, <laughs> exactly. seriously? Exactly. I, you know, 
oh, you guys get out of here. But yeah, um, I would say give out your Twitter one more time because if they if they connect with you on Twitter and turn on their notifications, you will tell them when your next show is whenever exactly. it is. It's Do that a, one more time. Greg time. G R E G T I M E. Yes, that's right. That's how you spell time Excellent. in the English language. So yes, that's where I'm at. At Greg time. I, I tweet it out. Um, I tweet it at New American Media as well. You retweet it for me very efficiently usually. So yeah, yeah usually it's a blog talk radio slash new American media and it hops on there. Just go on that page and you'll see all the archive shows as well. Yeah, but I mean you're you're definitely an Indians, Cavs, Browns, and Buckeye fan, but you do want to extend into sports and more and mm-hmm. do some other shows. But you know, during the middle of a playoff run for a title with the world's best player on your team and LeBron James, you know what? Maybe we'll just focus on the sports for now, and then you know once we get that parade, we can uh, move along. But anyway, in the interest of time and things moving along, we're gonna bring in somebody into the program that you may recognize. He has been on our show oh I don't know for the past three, three and a half, four years, and he was at tonight's game. His name is Zach Barris. He's a former NBA scout and current NBA consultant. So I say we bring him into the show and uh, have a grand time. I love patiently waiting for the calls to answer. It's my favorite part of the program, by the way. The gold circle hotline. (laughs) Gold circle. (laughs) What was the name of that buffet over there? Oh, I don't know. Hey, Brian, how you doing? Oh, Zach, I'm doing fantastic. I also want to introduce you to Greg Moore. He's on the, he's already on the line. Greg, say hi to Zach. Hello, Zach. How's hey, up how there? East Fourth Street. I'm jealous. Yeah. Well, hey, Zach, let me let me ask you, man. You were yeah. at the game. T- tell us tell us about uh, your experience. What it felt like. Well, I can tell you, it was the loudest I've ever heard it in there. Um, it was the loudest I've ever been in any arena where it was. Um, I don't know how it sounded on TV. It it sounded good. It didn't sound what I'm hearing secondhand that it was. Uh, the announcer was like Dwayne Wade myself. said, "I couldn't, I, I couldn't, I couldn't hear my, you I next to me." My... It was it was at the point where it was so loud in there you couldn't hear it. You couldn't hear anything. That's abs- that, that is fantastic. How how nervous were you, Zach, when it came? Uh, the Cavs built such a strong lead and then let it all slip away in the fourth quarter. What were you feeling? Um. You know, I got really nervous. I did. I, mean, I was extremely nervous, actually. I mean, but part of me said, you know, this is what I viewed it as. I go, don't worry. You still have the best player in the world. You're not going to lose this game. You think LeBron's going to let this team lose after having a 20 point lead? No. He, not going to happen. He is a floor general. I mean, it's, it's more than a player. He and Della Vadova played so well tonight, it was unbelievable. Yeah, it it really was. You, they you, we knew that somebody needed to step up. And Greg, let me ask you about Della Vadova. Um, Tanya, w- w- Greg, what is your takeaway with Tanya. Della Vadova? <laughs> what, what what do you, I don't know. What do you make of his performance tonight? Uh, he just plays that hustle. That he plays that Euro ball that just drives everyone nuts. Like he is the first on the floor for every ball. Like no matter where he's on the court, and I just know it drives. Everyone, the Warriors, nuts. And he drove Steph Curry nuts. Steph Curry was so frustrated for those first three quarters. Um, I don't know if Della Dova got gassed or just Curry just was chucking up stuff. Della Dova, honestly, Della Dova was just worn out. I mean, you could tell just by the end that he was worn out. It was just physically exhausted. He hasn't I mean, been run Della this hard thing. in a long time. Well, that was the thing we didn't see about LeBron tonight. I mean, where at one point did you ever say, oh, LeBron looks exhausted? You know, at one point we started cramping up at the end, you know, and it was hard to tell. You know, I'm sitting in my seat, and one, you know, and the person sitting next to me goes, "Just to let you know, Shumpert has a separated shoulder." And he doesn't have a separated shoulder, and he goes, "How do you know?" And I go, "If he had a separated shoulder, he would have just returned to the bench in full uniform with a compression sleeve on his shoulder." And he's like, "Are you sure?" And I'm like, "Just, I'm willing to bet my life that he doesn't have a separated shoulder." So, it was, you know, when you're at that game, you have absolutely. I mean, the crowd tonight. I have no access basically to Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, the whole game. So it was very tough to tell you know, what was going on otherwise. But, you know, I have to say it was an epic performance, another one by LeBron tonight. I mean, there's nothing selling this performance short. I mean, let's just put it that way. It was one of the best performances you're ever going to see. And in the finals alone, LeBron has proved himself that, you know, hey, I've got some good role players I can help. Mazda was good tonight. Tristan was good tonight. You know, they, they moved the ball a while. You know, they moved the ball around well. Towards the end, I think they were just moving the ball so well all game. You know, LeBron with an iso ball where he stopped passing. You know, and it's very tough to scout the game when, when you're forced to stand up the entire game. 
it's very tough to get a real read on the game. I, I don't ever recall sitting at one point really more than 15 to 30 seconds at a time. So ever this whole this game. whole game, everybody was standing up the whole time. Uh, yeah, I mean, I know I was on TV because my my you know my roommate wound up getting text messages about it, and we were sitting literally directly behind the cabin bench. So yeah. You know, I think I recorded it, so I'll, ha- I'll I'll have to take a look at that one. Greg, talk about what Zach was was mentioning. There is another epic performance from LeBron James. What can be said that that hasn't been said right now? I mean, how impressed are you? Uh, I'm impressed. I mean, he's putting the whole team on his shoulders, and he just uh, he now has the most points in three games. So take that, Rick Barry, former Warrior. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the- you know I was, You know what? You know what the best part about tonight was before the game started. They showed they showed all the national analysts saying saying the Cavaliers have no chance. Stephen A. Smith, mm-hmm. you saw them all up there going, the Cavaliers have no chance without Kyrie Irving. They showed them. The whole crowd started booing. It lit the crowd on fire literally from the start. And you knew in the first couple of minutes of that game that the Cavaliers were going to win that game. When they were up 12 to five in that game, you knew they were going to win it. Just something about it, the atmosphere, and then you knew LeBron was not going to lose that game. That is the impression that I'm getting. I'm seeing such a calm, focused, calculating, cunning uh, player that, that kind of has this this whole thing worked out. I, I don't feel like there's any way we can lose. Greg, let me ask you, do, do you feel like this stage and these lights are a little too bright for Steph Curry right now? Because it's sure looking like he's a lost deer out on the freeway somewhere. Yeah, I was going to make that point. Sure, like, I'll I just... play it. Oh, Greg, go, go, for, go first, and then I'll get to Zach. Oh, okay, no, yeah, it just looked like you can tell that he has not been here before. Like LeBron looks like the MVP. He's been here before. He's done it before. And Steph Curry just looks lost. He doesn't know how to handle it. He's trying to do too much stuff. Especially that behind the back pass. Oh, that was beautiful. That cocky yeah. son of a. Yeah, yeah. Seriously, good for him screwing that up. Seriously, what a cocky sob. Uh, Zach, how how much of that is, is relevant when it comes to experience versus uh, just pure talent? What well, you're seeing with that. Steph. Well, take a look at LeBron's first finals. If LeBron was this good, he'd have been able to. I mean, well, that team was terrible, but. He was able to carry the Cavs further than he did. You know, they wouldn't have been swept. Let's go to series number two. That was the Miami team that was better than Dallas. LeBron single-handedly arguably lost that series for Miami. He was so bad. Let's go to the next year against Oklahoma City. He was a man on a mission. He wasn't losing that series. He was the best player in the series by far. They won in five. The next year, they beat an unbelievable San Antonio team. They beat an unbelievable San Antonio team that season. Seven. And it was it was it was a dog fight to win that series, but LeBron was excellent. Last year, I just think he was tired. I don't think he had it in him. He was just this worn year, out. He didn't pace totally himself the right story. way. You're looking at a team in the Golden State Warriors that haven't faced, you know, and this is a term like I said that I hate, but it gets overused in sports all the time. But a team that really hasn't faced any adversity all season. No, at one point they didn't have any. I don't think they had a losing streak more than two or three games all season. Didn't have any part in the playoffs. You know, when they were down two to one, Mike Conley was out. Right with the injuries with Memphis. You knew they were going to win that series either way. Yeah, it was just so a matter of could it be extended playoffs, long enough, right? They sat there and said, "We're going to lose tonight." You know, I can't tell you the last time this team lost two in a row. You and know, the- Golden State when their backs were against the wall. This is not the same as the Memphis series. Memphis doesn't have anyone that can score. Cleveland does. You know, that's the difference. Well, right the now we have two guys that can score, and you, you hope that you get something out of Mozzie or Shumpert or Delhi. You know, if it ain't if it ain't LeBron or JR, like where are the points coming from minus like two All-Stars? Saying, oh, Golden State is the only team in the playoffs other than the San Antonio Spurs. I don't think the Cavaliers would have swept. Well, we were like I said in the beginning to this program, we're we're one phantom Timofey Mozgov traveling call away from being up 3-0 with the closeout game tomorrow. Um, uh, let me ask you this, Greg. Reg- real quick again, Brian. Real quick again. Yeah. I don't mean to interrupt. No, go ahead. Take the Bulls series again. <coughs> Hold on, let me just. <laughs> Yes, we'll take the Bulls. I think the Bulls got him by the horns. Sorry, I'm having peanut butter and jelly. It's late. I've been drinking. <laughs> oh, I thought you were making but, a choke noise for the Bulls there. Oh, yeah, God, yes, yes. That was a choke noise for the Bulls. Tonight, but let's take this. <laughs> the Cavaliers have adapted to playing without Kevin Love in their starting lineup. They've learned to play without him. I think there was an adjustment in the Bulls series. There definitely was. Oh, yeah. You know, the, the floor spacing was just totally different. I don't think LeBron was used to it yet. You saw him get used to it in the hot series. And you saw the Cavaliers wipe the floor with them, although Damari Carroll still calls the Hawks a better team because he's delusional. 
Yeah, but, and, and and Dwight Howard is still a champion. Don't forget. You know, however, let's look at this and say, okay, LeBron's learned to play without Tristan Thompson. The one thing that's shocking to me is how well they played without Kyrie Irving. Yeah. You know, and this is the same thing I've been saying all time. If you hold Golden State to under 100, you're going to beat them. What have they done two games in a row? They've, hold, they've held Golden State to under 100. Well, that's that's them. that's actually the point I was I was getting to with the question I was going to ask Greg a second ago. Is Greg, what do you think the defense has done to the Warriors? Zach kind of alluded to the fact that they haven't really faced adversity. I mean, are you as surprised as I am with just how badass that defense is performing for the Cleveland Cavaliers? Minus Love, minus Irving. I mean, I feel like they're playing better without Love or Irving. It's almost like Love and Irving are defensive liabilities. Yeah, I just don't know if they're just stepping up. I have one question, though, for you, and I, I watched lots of, a lot of the analysts. They keep comparing this series to the Memphis-Golden State series, and Memphis and the Cleveland two totally different problem. teams. Go ahead, Zach. There's a difference in the series. Give me one guy in Memphis that can put up 25 points a game on any given night. Exactly. Con- Conley, probably, right? Is, no, he can't. Conley averages 13, 14 points a game. He's not a 25 point a night guy. Take, for instance, LeBron James. LeBron James is by far the most dominant player in the league when he wants to be. By far. When LeBron wants to put up 40 a night, LeBron's going to put up 40 a night. Yeah. He's already said, yeah, Golden State's going to let me put up 40 a night. That's yeah, he laughed at that. He goes, they're not letting well, me do Golden anything. State's I'm going and taking three it. Games in a row and they barely slept. They barely, barely crept in there in game two, in game one. I'm sorry. They, they barely were creeping by in game one with LeBron putting up over 40. And he hasn't shot well until tonight. Well, even tonight, I, I, I wouldn't mean, say he shot well, but he had a great... He was getting to the line, though. His true shooting percentage is high, and that's what counts. That's okay. all that matters. All right. He had more yeah, points was... in the field goal attempts. A lot yeah, he more. went 14 for 34. Yeah. Regarding, regarding how Steph... Points, Cur- how many points? 40. Yeah, he, okay, he ended up with 40 with, two, with 40 the last two free throws. His, shooting, his true shooting was well over 50%, okay? Oh, yeah. Oh, so... Let's take that into account. The, the amount he was setting up the offense tonight, the amount of shots he created for his for his teammates. Who does Memphis have that can do that? No one. And when Memphis wasn't healthy, you know, Memphis wasn't healthy without coming. I think Memphis with a healthy Conley would have given them a lot of the money. Granted, I don't think they would have beaten them. I think Golden State's still much better than Memphis. We saw what the Cavs did to Memphis both times during the regular season. Yeah. They annihilated them. Yeah, and I mean, that, that's the thing. When it comes to the playoffs, you always start asking, like, what's the better matchup? You know, who has the fast, you know, the wing players, who has the, you know, the the, the, the tall height and the, the size advantage down low. And, you know, the, the point is to be the champ, you got to be ready to beat anybody out there. And, you know, I, I put this out there a couple minutes ago before we started the program. Um, I told Greg, and I'll, and I'll ask you now on the air. What do you think about if if we allow ourselves to think, heaven forbid, we're able to bring this thing home? Wouldn't a statue involving both Della Vadova and LeBron be so fitting and so Cleveland and so appropriate well, speak, for this season? Speaking of statues tonight, Jim Tomey was at the game. Oh, Jimmy was. Jim Tomey was there. Mark Price was there. Jim Brown was there. They all got stop loud standing ovations. Uh-huh. Urban Meyer was there too. Urban was there. Mm-hmm. I was sitting right behind Urban Meyer and Chris Christie. Oh, jeez. They were geez. sitting next to each other. I gave Chris Christie a thumbs up. He gave a thumbs back. A thumbs up back to me. Chris Christie. Chris Christie. Did he run up like eighty thousand dollars on? Right behind Chris Christie. Did, 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 he, did he run up an eighty thousand dollar bar tab on with, with hot dogs and refreshments like he did in New Jersey? No, but he does. He does have a big ass. Well, of course he does. Huge. huge. So now, uh, Greg, I want to ask you about Chris Christie's ass. Uh, speaking about the oh, Republican yeah? field in 2016. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, now I'm just thinking about his ass. What the heck was I starting to go for? I was. I, I swear I had a question in there. Um, oh, did you happen to see see LeBron James give the bow to to Jim Brown before yes. the game? What? I didn't. I did not. I mean, here's the problem on the scoreboard. The way the, the seats I was sitting in, it is impossible to see anything more than that. I was directly right behind the Cavs bench, a couple rows back, so it is very difficult to see anything. No, I, 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 Greg, how cool was it that LeBron challenged the Cleveland fans to come out in droves? How oh, cool! Oh, awesome! I, I mean, you know, they're, you know they're going to come out anyways. I mean, I'm sure they're still out there. If I turn on Sports Center right now and they're yes. live, I'm sure they're still standing out there until they kick. They have, yeah, until they're kicked out, they're not leaving. Until those lights go off, they're staying out there. Uh, I was talking on Facebook back and forth with uh, Damian. 
And uh, we were talking uh, just how – imagine if they win the whole thing. They're going to burn that whole city down, right, Zach? I don't think they're going to burn it down. I think people are just going to be celebrating. <laughs> it was nuts tonight. Yeah, we're not it's Baltimore. Hopefully we're not Baltimore. I, I saw stories that they're going to be protesting outside the game. It's like, all I right. didn't see anything tonight. I, I heard about it. I didn't see it. Yeah, well, you know, let, let, let's let just – we can do whatever we want, just keep it civil. And, and I'm, I'm so thrilled to see Cleveland being better than what we've seen in St. Louis and Baltimore. Um, anyhow, I digress. But moving forward – what are we, what are we looking at with him on Shumper, Greg? Do we have any update on what happened with him with his injury? Uh, I've not seen anything yet. To be honest with you, I've looked it up. I don't have anything, so I don't. Zach, do you... they said it was a shoulder injury, but from the replay, I don't know if they saw it on the big screen. But like on the replay on TV, it looked like he like almost broke his arm because it bent all the way back. I don't know if you saw it as well, Brian. That's but... what I saw. Um, it looked bad, but I knew as soon as he was coming back out of the tunnel. Um... You know, he was going to be okay. I mean, he wouldn't have still been in his jersey with a compression sleeve on. He'll be fine. Yeah, so and he, he shot a compression the ball on, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, he hit a big three point, big three pointer, right after after he came back. Yeah, yeah I mean that that was yeah. enormous because we're down to what seven players. They they played Mike Miller a little bit more, um, a little bit of James Jones, and a couple of stupid fouls. Zach, what what did you make of of the extreme end of our role players tonight with Miller and Jones and? What are we going to need to bring this thing up? You know on? what? Mike Miller was decent. James Jones was good. I mean, that, that's the thing. is These guys keep – they have it in them. They do, and they've so. played with LeBron for, you know, th- two, three, four years. And man, I just keep thinking now, like, wouldn't it be interesting if, if Ray Allen was on the team? But, of course, then he would have taken minutes away from someone else. So how can you even think about that? But um, Don't even think Ray Allen because you don't know what this team would even be like with Ray Allen. But, and I have to say I mean, that. You're right. You're so right. I, I thought about the, the, the Buckeyes today after watching this win. What if Braxton Miller was in? What if JT Barrett was in, but they weren't the right guy to take down Alabama and Oregon? Who would have guessed 20 points out of Matthew Della Vadova? But um, I really think that, that Delhi symbolizes what so much of Northeastern Ohio is all about. It's about a work ethic. It's about hustling. It's about being undersized. It's about being laughed at and counted out. It's about jokes being told at you. It's, it's about uh, nobody expecting yeah. anything out of you. And Della Vadova is stepping up on the biggest stage, an undrafted dude who is just kind of, you know, and we'll give it to Steph Curry. He had a very good second half, but he's really wearing him out. He's wearing Steph Curry I think out. Steph is, I think Steph is getting tired, so I just want to – I think he's just getting tired. Uh, Brian, i got to get going. It's 2 in the morning. i got to be at work tomorrow at 9 Perfect. So All right. Let, I got, I will – let's continue this tomorrow. I apologize for – cutting it short. No, 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 it's all good. You you take care. I, that's why I brought Greg on, because I knew your time was limited in one of these I days. Will, I will talk to you tomorrow. All right, man. Zach? Thanks again. Have a good night. Go Cavs. There right. was Zach Barris. Okay, Greg, you were jumping in there. Go ahead. Oh, I said just going to the pen. Here I am. <laughs> going to the ball. What, what is – am I am I tapping my wrist? Like, what time is it? Or tugging on your my left ear? Arm. I'm the underdog. Yes. Let's do it. I'm undersized. I I mean Greg th- this is this would be the storybook ending and we're two games away. We've waited so long to get to this point and we're two two victories from completing this quest. Um what would it mean to the city of Cleveland to bring home the first title since 1964 and 143 straight champ uh seasons from professional sports teams? What would it mean? Uh, I mean it'd just be amazing. I I I no I would have no words from it for it. I think I would start crying. <laughs> Honestly, I've been, um, I don't. I like. I think I. You probably too. I'd be shocked or in awe. I just don't know how to react. Like Ohio State won. I was all excited about it. But, you know, that's more Columbus. Um, wow. I don't. I don't know. Like I just wouldn't. Even, I it mean, it means everything for the city. I mean, you just see how it's. I mean, just not even sports wise, but like LeBron coming back, economy wise. And, it's just huge for a city that's been down for so long. It would yeah. mean so much. I mean, you, neither of us live there, so we really don't know. <laughs> yeah, I know. We, uh, you, you've been in Charlotte. I've been in Los Angeles uh, for the past, let's just say, a long time. Um, hmm. No, I, I've been crying for the past season. You know, like, like tears what, of joy. I mean, like well, kind of. It, it's just an overwhelming. I, you know, here's the thing about LeBron James. I was so pissed off at him, obviously, because. <clears throat> as a Cleveland sports fan, you know, especially a local guy, it's like, let's finish what we started here. Come on, you, we're very close to this. 
let, let's let's find a way to do this. And I think LeBron was playing general manager too early in his career, and that's how we end up with all these crazy deals with Ben Wallace and Wally Zerbiak and uh, 48-year-old Shaquille O'Neal. And it was like then we had no cap flexibility and we couldn't do anything with it, and all we had was Larry Sasha Hughes Pavlovich. to show for it. Exactly. Um, you know, and we were bending over backwards to keep him happy, but we were screwing it up, and we had to just completely implode. But, you know, I, I viewed at the time, coming a, a couple of years off of the 07-08 um, stock market crash and the housing crash, when LeBron left in 2010, it really was, it was indicative of a, a, a system that wasn't willing to, to pull up your bootstraps and find a way and bust your ass and figure it out and rise up together. It was, it was kind of tuck tail and run and go join the communists in some ass backward country or something like that. It, 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 it really just reeked of, there was no lesson there. It, it, was, it was so disappointing. It was so demoralizing to just see it's like, oh, even this dude's going to bail on me. All right, cool. You know, it's like we, we kind of needed that, that superhero to figure it out. But you know what? Let's face it. He didn't know how to win a championship. And now if he comes back this time, this is going to be unlike uh, almost any other sports story you could imagine because, yeah, I, 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 tears welled up in, in my eyes. I took the day off work when uh, uh, Jay Crawford read the story on ESPN, a uh, dude from Bowling Green, actually, where I went to school. Um, but Jay Crawford started reading the letter. You know, go Falcons. Yeah, you've, you've spent some time in, in good old Bowling Green, but we won't get into that just yet. Wow. I don't remember. The, <laughs> you're like, you'll have to cue me in on those stories. Woo! <laughs> um, no, but I remember when Jay Crawford said, you know, I'm coming home, and in, in Ohio, every th nothing is given, everything is earned. And, uh, you know, he looked at the past four years like college, experience to go away from home and kind of grow up a little bit. And, you know, th th this really is the hero story personified, two wins away from getting this. I mean, at this point, Greg, let me just ask you this, because I have been, been welling up and crying and just having moments of, like, this is so much bigger than sports to me. It's not just about some stupid title. It's, a, it's about the hopes and dreams and the just that thing inside of your heart and your soul, that gumption, that, that give a shit, that, that, that passion that, that pushes people. It's something that Clevelanders, if, you, if you're not from here, you just don't get it. And it's like three generations of people, ah, oh, they'll find a way to screw this up. Ah, oh, they always, oh, they'll never bring up. Oh, I'll tell you the one time with the Indians and, oh, remember when the Browns and Red Right? And it, it, it's just like you grow up with this disgusting fog over your head, Greg. And um, I, I just really think this, this would be the, the culmination of the hero story, um, the, 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 the classic hero story that's been told since time immemorial. It's all set up for this. Am I allowed to start dreaming of a parade in a, in, of a championship, or do I need to calm the F down and just take a deep breath? Where am I at? I, I would calm down. That's just me trying to be rational because um, I want to say 97 I was ready to we were ready to go I think you know with the Indians oh yeah but, uh, that all uh, hit the fan um, but I, I just don't I don't see this team losing three out of four I don't either I mean unless they're worn down I mean I was going to ask Zach a couple more questions maybe you can ask him tomorrow when you talk to him just about if Golden State or Steve Kerr can make the changes but when they were down by 20 and they um had that little inside tracks with steve kerr and look he it looked like he had no idea what to say like he, he just said hey guys go out there and chuck up threes like you normally do i mean that's that's their whole offense right now because <laughs> they can't play big with us no they I mean, can't literally like it, it's annoying like i mean luckily curry and thompson weren't hitting too much tonight but literally well if you heard lebron james after the game he said um you know, he goes. I'm. He goes. Frankly, I'm surprised that we're here at this stage right now. I thought it was going to take a lot longer to get here, which was very revealing. He 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 legitimately struck me as surprised that they were able to get this far this fast, um, with without some growing pains. Um, you know, I, I don't know, Greg. I, I don't know. I, I don't know if Steve Kerr has any idea of how to actually slow this down. I don't know if LeBron is just toying with people. I don't know how much is Tyron Lue and how much is David Blatt.
But I'll tell you what, I, can you think of a head coach that's had to go through more than David Blatt's gone through in the past no. year? Between coming over from a different country and a diff, you know, different customs and gif, different uh, just schemes and, and personalities and all the pressure and the mag, magnoscope. I'm sorry, the, uh, the, the magnifying glass telescope. Anyway, the magnifying glass that is being around LeBron James, almost getting fired halfway through the season, getting rid of Kevin Love and having to figure out a new lineup, losing Kyrie Irving, figuring out a new lineup. I mean, David Blatt has seen some crap this year, hasn't he? Well, he also did invent the magnoscope. So let's not take that away from him. <laughs> can you make but, a meme uh, of the magnoscope? <laughs> I'm going to have to now. Am I, on the, am I on the clock again or can I finish? You're this on the clock. Oh, oh, hey, can you pimp out the thing that you did? T- tell them about the thing that you did about the magnoscope. Uh, tell no. Last, uh, the last show I did with Zach. Explain what happened. Okay, last show you did with Zach, uh, <laughs> I don't know. You put up, I don't know. I was listening at like whatever time. And of you, course. Uh, Zach, all right, there's a South Park episode with Russell Crowe fights around the world, and it's just him and this. Uh, tugboat named Tugger they go around and that reminded Zach of Matthew Delavadova so I made a picture of Matthew Delavadova as Russell Crowe with Tugger behind him and I've been trying to send it out of work because it's probably the funniest thing ever this season and, it, and it's so. and it's so funny because Zach just said him and his friends make this joke about it and so I put Greg on the clock and said make a meme and I saw it within like 20 minutes it was sitting there I'm like you gotta be kidding me this is great technology is so great these days I can Te- do it all on my iPhone technology so. is awesome um but back to David Platt. Yeah, back to whatever we were talking you about. You can just Blatt. tell that he's coached before. I mean, he's been through all this stuff. I mean, you got like you got to think though. Before he was juggling all these superstars around. Now, I mean, now it's I know it's you know everyone says LeBron calls all the plays, blah blah. But there's still there's something to it. And I think Tyrone Lue was brought here because I think he's kind of LeBron's boy, or him and LeBron have some connection there. But I think this coaching staff is so much better than Steve Kerr right now, at least because Steve Kerr's never been here before or any kind of championship before. I mean, David Blatt, you know, destroyed the Israeli league or something. I don't know if they won last year. He won 10 European championships. They were, they were showing the stat. Oh. 10 of them. There you go. I don't know. I, I don't follow the European game all that much, but no, I mean, I mean, it really is impressive. So you'll say, calm down. Don't start the, but uh, I, be, like I said, LeBron hits that, uh, last second shot, or Iman Shumpert hits that follow through, or Timofey Mozgov isn't called for that phantom travel. We win game one, and we're sitting here up three zero. You know, so like I I, I don't want to get cocky because even when we get up twenty, we, we we cut it to a one point or a three point game, and it's like oh crap. Yeah. You know, so you cannot. You know, I, I I'm not going to disrespect the Warriors. They they have a lot of talent over there, but you can tell the moment is too big for them. They haven't fought adversity. That's such a great point you bring that up, Greg. I don't know if I've heard too many people talking about this, and, and maybe we'll hear a lot more of it tomorrow, but I really think you're onto something. The Warriors don't know adversity, and, and when you're hit with it for the first time you and you don't know how to cope and you haven't hit your rock bottom and you haven't had to do soul searching, doing that on the fly with all the lights and the biggest pressure, like like this gets a lot worse before it gets better. Um yeah, I, th- I think you have a fantastic point with that. Yeah, there's no one on this team that's been there before. Um, no one. Um, they just, I mean, LeBron's been there, James Jones, Mike Miller, uh, who am I forget? Kendrick Perkins, he's been there. He's a big part of it. He has. Sean Marion, Sean Marion. But, I mean, they've been there. I mean, like, you don't see what goes on the bench or what they're saying. I mean, I'm sure Kendrick Perkins is saying, take that guy out. But, you know, I mean, that's something. <laughs> Did you see early in the game when, when that, uh, who was that? That smacked into Delhi and knocked him over, and Delhi jumped up and kind of lunged at his hip to like slam into him. Did you see? I think that was in the first quarter. I'm sure it was Draymond Green. Draymond and, Green should have been teed up twice in the game. You have him or Bogut. I mean, Bogut. I mean, you guys mentioned on your last show, Bogut is dirty. Like they called Dirty Delhi. I mean, I don't know if these guys play rugby rules down because Bogut's Australian as well. So I don't know if they think they're playing Australian rules or what. But well, I I gotta say, man, I and I, I really just have to put this out there. I think the fix is in. Um, you know, now I'm going to go uh, the new American media style with conspiracy theories that, that we'll do on Agree to Disagree all the time. Um, mm-hmm. We'll talk about the Bilderberg Group and, and uh, the New World Order and the, and the military-industrial complex and, you know, other worldly exopolitical agendas. Anyhow, I digress. But I really feel like, Greg, oh, that was fun. Uh, I feel like, <laughs> Greg, that, that the, the fix is in. I think that these refs really are um, 
shafting Cleveland intentionally. I felt it again very strong this this game that we just won. Did you feel it as well, or am I overreacting? If I were to go that way, I don't. I would not. I would hope not. It wouldn't be that way. I feel like they are trying to make the games close to make them more interesting because of ratings and whatnot. But I would hope to disagree. But I feel like everything's been inconsistent. I mean, especially at the end of the game there with that, um, the Deladova was out of bounds. It wasn't out of bounds. And they gave Golden State the ball, and then they gave it back to Cleveland. It's like, come on, guys. You guys are supposed to be the best of the best here. And there's four guys out there that look like they're over 65 years old trying to call up a basketball game. Yeah, and then that one was tough where uh, we got the dunk, and then Tristan's arm knocked it back up through the hoop, and they took the points off the board. Right. Um, okay, fine, that's that. But I'm talking about a lot of other plays. I'm, I'm seeing a lot of ticky-tack crap being called on us, and then they're getting away with it when they're hacking us um, on the drives. I, I think LeBron probably could have had 48 or 50 points if they would have actually called the fouls that he was getting fouled on. Um, am I, so Well, a, a dr- he should. Get, he should. And at this point in his career, I, I brought this up on my show, actually. That's Sports and More, by the way. Tell us, um, about, tell us about your show real quick before you tell <laughs> us what you brought up. It's Sports and More. You can find me on Blog Talk Radio slash the American Media. Sports and More. I should do episode eight tomorrow. We'll see. And Everyone on Twitter. Where are you at on Twitter? Because that's when you're... At, at Greg Time. At Greg Time. Okay, G-R-E-G-T-I-M-E, that's Greg Time. T-R-E-G-T-I-M-E. All one word. M-O-U-S-E. Okay, so, right. so no, uh, on there. what were we saying now? Something about uh, something? Yes, I was saying something about something. Something you brought up on your show yesterday. You, you were saying... So I says uh, to the guy, I says, <laughs> "What about the refs? What are we talking about now? You didn't rough me. Pro- pro- my train of thought here. Probably the refs. Yeah, I run, I run my own show here. Um, we had to have no, been talking about the referees. No, just the referees is just how they call inconsistent. Inconsistently, yeah, yeah, everything's inconsistent. Like uh, every once in a while, you call a travel, then you don't call a travel, and then you see like plays where like LeBron gets the ball inbounds, he walks like seven steps." Yeah, that one play. <laughs> All right, I'll give it to you on that. Like that. I mean, if you're gonna call that was five travel, steps. Call high school travel the entire game. You gotta keep it consistent. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that that one was pretty ridiculous. I, okay, yeah. I'll give you that. But I, I really do get the feel that that uh, the, the refs are favoring Golden State even at home tonight, and it's it's really upsetting me that LeBron is not just beating the Warriors; he's also beating the refs. Right. Well. That would make him. That's why you're the best player in the world. Oh, that's what I was saying. Superstar calls. I apologize backtracking now is like when you get to a certain point like Michael Jordan got every call ever so I don't I mean I feel like you get to a certain point Kobe gets every call ever LeBron is the best player on earth he should get every call and he has been for the past seven years probably correct so I don't know if it's part of the quote unquote Cleveland curse but I doubt it yeah um by the way what do you make of Dan Lebitard if if people aren't familiar with this little story do do you happen to follow this one I did follow it. Um, I did put up another meme uh, combined with Happy Gilmore that says you eat pieces of shit for breakfast. Um, well, Dan Levitard said <laughs> that Dan Levitard said that if the Cavs win, he would eat shit for breakfast if he win the NBA Finals. But I, um, I did a little, I don't want to say a little more research, but in my, my tweeting and retweeting, um, there's a guy that uh, runs a radio show in Cleveland. His name's Kenny Kidd. He's part of the Ken Carmen show. He retweeted me back that the story was fake and it was just a publicity stunt because uh, he works for ESPN, and he said that there's no way that they would let Dan Levitard ever do that. It was just a stupid joke by Dan Levitard. So. Yeah, but isn't he, the, isn't he the same guy that took out the billboard uh, in, in Akron thanking him for yeah. I Apparently they just let these ESPN guys do whatever they want because Bill Simmons was out there doing whatever he wanted. No, too, Bill so Simmons they... was booted out of that network because he didn't toe the line. Levitard got suspended from him for the same thing. No, maybe they should know. come over to the new American media. They can do whatever they want over here. So. You know, and actually they should. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're dropping S bombs so casually these days. It's it's almost <laughs> like I've I've thrown it up to the wolves. The wolves have taken over. I tells you. Well, it's, I meant to bring up uh, the PG thirteen and R thing. You yeah. can say the F word once at least, and it's still PG thirteen. You can say the S word as much as you want. So we're still PG thirteen. So we're good. Is that how that works? No, I I just I I aim I strive for something. A, I don't know. I mean, seriously, uh, Greg, when we did our five-minute pregame, do I cuss like a sailor occasionally? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I just, you know, from time to time, it's it's just how, how a person speaks. But when I present myself here, I'm trying to do it a certain way just to, I don't know. I just, uh, it's the game face. It's the game voice, I suppose. But, um, no, I, I hope to not be swearing very much this season. I hope to be doing a lot of celebrating 
and uh, cheering and, and applauding what's going on with this Cleveland Cavaliers team because, you know, a, as we mentioned earlier, it's since 1964, we haven't had a title. And Cavs in six. You're, you're saying Cavs in six? Can I say – because I've waffled on this. I said Cavs in six, and then I changed to Cavs in seven after the Kyrie injury. Can I bring it to Cavs in five? Sure. Am I allowed to do this? Like, Yeah. You know, so I've made three predictions. I, I've never swayed from the fact that the Cavs are going to win. Maybe we're surprising people. I, I wonder what the national narrative is going to be tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I wonder what they're going to say. Are they going to focus on the fact that they blew a 20-point lead and got it down to, like, three points or one point? Or is it the fact that we had this game in the bag most of the game and uh, now, uh, aside from one free throw made in game one, we'd be up 3 nothing right now, and this is for real. This team is for real. My guess is real quick before we get off here is that it's going to be what they said post game, and I'm granted it was all Stephen A. Smith, so who cares? I'm sure. I'm, um, oh God, what's the other guy's name that I can't stand? Legler. On first take. Legler. No, no, no. On first take. Oh, uh, 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 now I'm thinking Zach Brown. Uh, 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 Skip Bayless. Skip Bayless, who calls him Prince James. They will talk. Well, anyways, after the, the whole post game, the whole thing was about how Steph Curry has now found his shot and how the Cavs are going to be worn down, and that's the whole narrative I've heard after the game. Granted, it was just Will Bond and Stephen A. Smith, who are pretty much Cavs haters anyways, or LeBron haters. So that's my guess what you'll hear tomorrow. tomorrow. And the only reason I wanted them to win in six is because it'll be home, and that'll be awesome. That would be, you know, if if, if it... And you would have to go there for the parade. Wouldn't you too? Uh, uh, once in a lifetime, you can always know, have right? your second, third, and fourth, but you, you you never get to recreate your first. Um, all right, well, you, you and I we'll talk off air. I've talked with Zach about this, and uh, I, I kind of have this thing running for the past couple of years, where when it does finally happen, I, I don't know that I really have much of a choice at this point. I, I've dedicated four years of my life to being the only Cleveland-centric, Los Angeles-based sports show that I'm currently aware of. And if, if we're able to do this uh, and bring it home, how could I avoid a parade? I, I, it would be very difficult for me to justify finding an excuse out of that. So, um, all right, Greg, we're almost out of time here. So real quick, once again, tell people where to find you on Twitter, when your next show is, how they can stay connected with you, and your new show, Sports & More with Greg Moore. Yes, my new show is Sports & More with Greg Moore. It is on Blog Talk Radio slash The New American Media. You can find me on Twitter at Greg Time, G-R-E-G-T-I-M-E. It's all one word. It's hilarious. Follow it. I put up a lot of cool memes and stuff, and I make jokes sometimes, too. Uh, my next show, I don't know. Follow me on Twitter, then you find out. There you go. All right, man. Well, sounds like a plan. I certainly appreciate your time. Uh, go Cavs. Like I said, one free throw away from being up 3 nothing. Go freaking figure. You know, we're not counting our chickens before they hatch, obviously, but with the best player on the planet seizing more than home court advantage at this point, I like our chances. Greg, looking forward to checking out your show tomorrow. Appreciate your time. And for everybody out there, check out thenewamericanmedia.com. On the right-hand side is TNAM Radio. That's where you click play to listen live. YouTube.com slash thenewamericanmedia. Click subscribe. On Facebook, do a search for The New American Media and like the page. I'm so impressed with the toughness, the heart, the grit, the fight, the passion, the intestinal fortitude that I'm seeing out of this Cleveland Cavaliers team. It just absolutely embodies what Cleveland sports is all about, what the Ohio work ethic is. I am so proud. But anyway, for everybody here at the TNAM Radio Network, I'm Brian Engelman. I appreciate you, I love you, and I am out. This is John B. Wells reminding you that not only is Brian Engelman a cool guy and not only is the New American Media dot com a very cool platform, but here's a cool idea for you too. Are you alone? Not really. Do you like dogs? Do you like cats? You do, of course you do. Everybody does. One or the other, maybe even both. You know, there are a lot of dogs and cats that are at shelters right now, and if somebody doesn't take them home, they're gonna wind up euthanized. That's a nice way of saying they're going to be killed, because there's simply not enough room. I guarantee it, the best dogs and the best cats, the best pets, come from shelters. There's something about dogs and cats they know. They know where they are. You walk through one of them, and certainly at least one is going to look at you and go, I wish you'd take me home. I'm in hell. Please take me out of here. It'll be the best thing that you ever did for your soul. You'll feel good about it. And not only that, but you have a friend for life. doesn't matter if you've got money, you don't have money. 
Well, it doesn't make any difference to a dog or a cat. All they need is the sound of your voice and maybe even the stroke of your hand, and they're fine. Maybe a little food every once in a while. The sweetest sound that those pets ever hear is your voice. Think it over and adopt a cat or a dog from a local shelter today. I'm telling you, you'll be glad you did.